Our next speaker is Jim Muldrow. Jim has been involved with highway construction and maintenance industry for over 53 years. Currently, he is the executive director of FP2, and he's the current chair advisory board of the National Center of Payment Preservation, Michigan State. Um, today, he's going to give us an update on the legislative update on new transportation incentives. Before I begin, I have a couple of comments. Uh, I think a lot of you know that we, FP2, kind of re, um, remade itself, reorganized in 2009. <clears throat> and in doing so, we set out a, several things in a, in a mission statement. Number one was advocacy. And that's happened since 2009. And uh, I think a lot of you are aware of what we've done and how we've done it. But uh, we continue to do that, and that's kind of the story I'm going to tell you in a few minutes. If you follow the news at all, uh, you pro you're probably not going to hear anything from me that you don't already know. I may have packaged it a little bit differently, but certainly if you follow the news, you, you know as much as I do, which is basically nothing, okay, in terms of infrastructure and what's happening. I'm not alone, though. <clears throat> And these remarks that I'm going to make actually uh, represent information that we've been able to gather on Capitol Hill uh, since the election. Notice I said information. I didn't say intelligence. I just said information. <laughs> the road to the new administration. Uh, kind of give you an overview of what I'm going to talk about. Key dates. Those are some of the important things. The 115th Congress. What do the committees look like that involve with transportation and infrastructure? Um, the infrastructure proposals, so to speak, uh, from the Trump administration. What an infrastructure bill, what it is going to entail if there is such a thing, and uh, at what size is it going to be. And then finally, I'll finish up with some notes about pavement preservation that we've been discussing for the last hour or so. Anyhow, so key dates. I think, again, if you read the papers, you know that if the end of this month something isn't done, the government's going to shut down. Um, it's happened before. There's been some talk that it'll never happen again, but I wouldn't go that far. Hopefully, um, something will be done. Probably, uh, at least what we've been able to pick up, will be a continuing resolution, which is another fancy way of saying kicking the can down the road. Uh, Probably another continuing resolution that will go on to maybe to, to the end of the year. Who knows what the length will be. It will also be the end of the first 100 days, which a lot of people in the media think is a very important thing. I don't quite get it myself, but what's so, much, what's so important about the first 100 days? Uh, uh, hopefully it's uh, continue to be progressive and so forth in getting things done. Uh, there needs to be something else done probably in the summer, which is a debt ceiling increase. Because without that, uh, the government isn't going to be able to function very well either. And that, of course, is going to take a lot of give and take in Congress to get that done. And to what extent and to how much it will be remains to be seen. Uh, federal, the spending bills, the deadline for fiscal year 2018 is at the end of September. And I'll remind you that you may have heard about the FAST Act and how the FAST Act included uh, a significant Two or, two or three percent increase per year through 2020 in the FAST Act, but the appropriation thing never happened. So that additional funding for 2016 never happened. And it isn't going to happen in 2015, 16, and 17 either until there's something done <clears throat> with the spending bills. So that's, uh, that's another little thing to be concerned about. Um, Federal Aviation Administration authorization is due by the end of September. Uh, that's a very important bill. As a matter of fact, it's probably going to happen before any transportation bill happens, because this also includes some upgrading of the air traffic control system, and that hasn't been exactly a piece of cake if you're following the news either. So there are some things that uh, can interrupt what happens. And then finally, the FAST Act ex expires at the end of September in 2020. And it was a, a five-year bill. But we're already two years into it, so it goes pretty fast. And um, we feel it's very important to find out and to keep abreast of what's happening and what the thought process is in terms of legislation, uh, because it's going to be here sooner than later. So 
What does the agenda look like for the 115th Congress? The uh, Affordable Care Act repeal, of course, if, unless you lived in a cave in the last six months, you know just about everything there is to know about that. Um, there's conversations that continue, and uh, we'll see what happens. The nominations uh, in the Senate uh, for the Cabinet, uh, these slides were prepared on Thursday, so there's been some activity over the weekend. There was one more Cabinet position filled, so there's only two left to do. And it's almost 100 days into the administration. It's unheard of, unheard of that the, it's, a long, it's never happened before it has taken this long to get the cabinet in place. Not only that, but as you'll see in a few minutes, there's a whole lot of positions that are important positions uh, that need to be filled that haven't even been nominated yet. So that's another issue in terms of the overall agenda. I think what I'm trying to paint a picture for you, if you will, is that as much as we would love in this room to think that infrastructure is very, very, very important in Washington, D.C., I want to tell you that there's a lot of other things getting in the way. And until those things get cleared up, we're probably not going to see a lot of activity, unfortunately. Of course, there's tax reform. That's another thing that's been in the news. What's that look like? What's going to happen? The Congressional Review Act. Um, that uh, will end at the end of April, actually. There's a 2018 appropriations that I talked about. There's a debt limit. And then finally, there's infrastructure. So you see where it kind of stacks up on the agenda of getting things done. Um, hopefully, it isn't as bad as I, I make it out to be. But uh, first of all, let's look at the Affordable Care Act repeal. Still on the table. Something may happen. Who knows? But one part of that was a pay for for tax reform over quite a bit of money, actually, about $150 billion over a 10 year period was factored into that Affordable Care Act repeal to go into tax reform. So there's a lot of things that are connected, if you will, on how this thing, how this thing operates. Senate nominations. Uh, 20 of the 22 cabinet members have been, have been nominated. Department of Labor, and I forget the last one, it's, uh, it hasn't been done yet. Um, but there are 500, and you see 554 key positions. Uh, 473 have no nominees at this point in time. And we're talking about you know, Secretary Chow, who's the Secretary of Transportation, doesn't even have a Deputy Secretary yet. Okay, so th those kinds of positions, which are very important within the entire government, there's 400 of them that haven't even been nominated yet uh, because of all the lack of activity, I should say, that's, that's going on. So uh, tax reform, it might include funding, and it may include funding for infrastructure as well as a highway trust fund. Um, that remains to be seen. When's it going to happen? That's as good a guess as anybody. Uh, it looks like that after the Affordable Care Act thing gets taken care of, then maybe tax reform will be part of the picture. And uh, there's one other thing that I didn't even put on the list, and that was uh, immigration. That's, that wasn't even on the agenda list, because it remains to be seen how that whole thing is going to play out. The Congressional Review Act, uh, 13 have been signed into law as of the 19th. And um, the idea there was that uh, there were uh, generally the current administration felt that there were regulations that are viewed by by them as being burdensome to both business and the economy so they were repealed and uh, there are several others uh, on the docket to be considered but right now there's been 13 that have been signed into law but they only have about uh, what 10 days left to do anything about it so the uh, Appropriations, as I mentioned before, for 2018 by the end of September of this year. The debt limit kind of depends on the inflow and outflow into Treasury. If it's really great, uh, that'll probably be not as bad as it could be. When's it going to happen? Uh, nobody really knows. But it will require some bipartisanship in order to make it happen. And uh, if we see how the game's been played for the last several months, that is a term that doesn't seem to be used much in Washington, which is bipartisanship. So then there's infrastructure. Well, let's look at that a little bit. Um, ASCE came out not too long ago with their, with their 
rating system and indicated, I believe it was a D for infrastructure. The first couple here, the things that you see there listed, uh, those are trillion dollars uh, in gross domestic product by 2025 if something isn't done. Uh, this is all coming from ASCE. And you see the lost business sales and lost jobs, et cetera. So it's a, a very t telling report card, if you will. Specifically to transportation, uh, delay costs about $160 billion in time and fuel in the year 2014, which was probably the last time that data was available for them to analyze. And then a one out of every five miles of pavements are in poor condition in the country. So there are a couple of committees on Capitol Hill that deal with these issues. One is um, the Environmental Public Works Committee in, in the Senate. It's chaired by John Barrasso from Wyoming. And the uh, ranking member is uh, Mr. Carper from Delaware. Um, in terms of the House, the House Transportation Infrastructure Committee, uh, Representative Schuster from Pennsylvania is the chair, and the, and the ranking member is uh, DeFazio from Oregon. Um, one of the things that, that gets discussed in terms of the transportation bill, infrastructure bill, whatever, as uh, we'll co cover in a couple of minutes, is, is the idea that there's going to be some public-private partnerships, some public-private partnering and, and financing and so on and so forth. But if you look at where the chairman live, Wyoming, rural Pennsylvania, and DeFazio in Oregon, which for the most part, you know, east of the Cascades, there's this big high desert. So very, very rural. Don't expect to see any turnpikes there, for example, or any toll roads. So anybody who's going to make some kind of an investment in infrastructure, they expect some payback as you would expect a concessionaire to do and want to do, not going to happen there. So it remains to be seen how this whole thing plays out in terms of money uh, to be had. Both committees actually, by the way, have, have started the general process having hearings. I think the uh, T&I committees had three hearings already. Uh, and the normal testimony that you would get from cities, counties, and also state DOTs and AASHTO, et cetera, ha have been there talking about these things. The infrastructure bill, let's talk a little bit about that as much as we, we know at this stage, I should say. A uh, couple of good things that have happened. Secretary Chow was confirmed in January. You might remember that she was Secretary of Labor at one point in time. She was Deputy Secretary of Transportation at one point in time, so she knows her way around. It also doesn't hurt that she happens to be the wife of the Senate Majority Leader. Okay, so that, that kind of helps things along. So she knows how to get things done, and, and that's good. That's good for us. Uh, second hundred days, maybe, we'll see a transportation or infrastructure bill. Uh, maybe, maybe not. As early as May, probably not, with other things that, that have already been discussed. Um, what's, what is infrastructure? What's in it? What's going to be included in the bill? You'll see here roads, rail, transit, air traffic control, energy, water, broadband deployment, veterans hospital, and other hospitals, uh, et cetera, et cetera. So there's, there's quite a long list, laundry list of what's going to be included in an infrastructure bill. Uh, so when they talk about $10 billion over a long period of time, don't think that it's all going to go into roads and streets. It's going to go to into a lot of other things, too. Um, we're talking about a trillion dollar package over a 10 year period. Yeah. And then what form will the investment come from? Where's the money going to pay for it? A variety of mechanisms have been discussed, as I mentioned, uh, private partner partnerships, uh, tax reform, perhaps, uh, streamlining regulations, perhaps. There's also the idea of repatriation, that idea of many large companies keeping money overseas, not wanting to have to pay the very high tax rate to bring it back into this country. There's been that, a lot of discussion about that, and can that be used for some kind of infrastructure work, tax reform, some kind of incentive programs. There's, there's been a lot of things discussed as terms of how this is all going to work out, because it's got to find the money to pay for it. That's, that's the whole issue. Where's the money going to come from? And you probably know that the federal gas tax has not been raised since 1993. 
At that point, it was 18.3 cents. It still is, with two point some cents going to transit. And that thing hasn't changed, even though the construction cost index has gone skyrocketing, as you know. Those of you in the ownership area know quite well how that's all working out. So the whole idea is, and it's been discussed a lot here today, is that where's the money going to come from and what's going to take to keep, keep what we have in good condition. Uh, at the same time that this type of uh, infrastructure bill was discussed by the president at some point in time during the uh, campaign as well as after he was elected, uh, there's also been a proposal from uh, the Senate Minority Leader, who is Sen Senator Schumer from New York, and you see here his proposal, what's included in that and how it's broken down again into uh, a lot of other areas than we might not think about in terms of uh, infrastructure proposals, but uh, nonetheless they're there. So where are we? Um, the infrastructure bill, obviously, it's, it's pretty opaque in terms of what's going to happen, how it's going to move forward. Uh, emphasis on tax credits, et cetera, that needs to be discussed and debated and figure out how that's going to happen. Obviously, we need voices that support this idea, as, as George mentioned at the beginning of the meeting today, that how are we going to keep what we have <clears throat> in good condition? Um, how are we going to afford to do that, et cetera? Um, there needs to be some way, some mechanism to fix the Highway Trust Fund. If we don't, by 2020, we will be using about $100 billion out of the general fund to fund the way things are right now. So there needs to be a fix, whether there's an increase in the user fee, whether it's no matter what it might be, and there's been a lot of things discussed, but something needs to be done to fix it. Ashto has been involved as well in, in discussing this at the federal level. And of course, we, we continually uh, need to make sure that our policymakers understand that what pavement preservation is and what the benefits are. Interestingly enough, uh, in the T&I committee this year, there's 20% 20 per, 20 of it's brand new, have never served before on the committee. So there's 20% of a committee of maybe 35 <clears throat> that probably don't know how to spell pavement preservation, let alone understand what it is. So that's another challenge for us to get up on Capitol Hill and make sure those people know what's going on. And I say here, the time is really ripe to, to get engaged. And I know some of you uh, can't do that. Uh, I know some of you don't want to do that. But there's a lot of people in here in this meeting today, for example, from industry's point of view, to get engaged. And what do I mean by getting engaged? Is either writing letters or going to Washington or if you're a member of ARPA or AGC or NAPA or any of the other large organizations, uh, ACPA, uh, there's a big fly-in scheduled in the middle of next month. And there will be four or 500 people there. And their whole mission is to go on Capitol Hill and talk to their legislators about the need for infrastructure bill, from the need for funding and so forth. And we will be there making sure that they also understand the need to preserve what we have. So it's, it's time to get engaged. We can't wait until 2019 when there's only 12 months left before the bill expires. We, we've been working at it ever since it was passed and we, will, we continue to do that. And I'll finish up with pavement preservation and uh, we've talked about some of these things already today so I won't belabor the point, but what, what works now and what doesn't work and if it doesn't work, why doesn't it work and what do we know about it and can training and certification make a big dent in happening, taking those things that don't seem to work, make them work? Uh, can programs be expanded and, and if they can, how? How is an agency who would like to do preservation and spend more of their money on doing it, but how do they do it if they have other constraints that, that get in the way? Um, is there is something that we, as FP2 and others, should be pushing, it should be some kind of a, a, a set aside if that's gonna be allowed in the next bill? Uh, you know, it's off, off limits now, but like it used to be, is that good, is that bad? But does there need to be a, a major federal program on pavement preservation? Uh, and if there is, what does it look like? And uh, how do we get there? And then finally, uh, it's been talked about as well, is how do we best explain the benefits of payment preservation to the general public? 
Uh, I think the local folks here have done a very good job of doing that. I've been able to convince their, their folks, their, their people that they represent, to be able to buy into this type of a program, and some agencies have done it as well at the higher level. But we need to best figure out how to do that, and that's something that the National Center, I know, is on their docket to help, help figure that out. So with that, there's, there's people who uh, make what we do possible by contributing to, to our efforts, and they're, they're listed here. I always like to finish my conversations with uh, showing you this slide because without them, <clears throat> we wouldn't do the things that we're doing. We wouldn't be able to do that. So I know I've, we've run over time a little bit. Um, I have questions up here, but I'll be here until noon on Thursday. So uh, if we want to uh, move on, I'll be, I'll be glad to, to pass on the questions right now. And you can grab me at the break or at some other time. But uh, thanks for your attention, and I appreciate it.